Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Watson Leaders Studio. And today, we have with us Dr. Soumya Badgayan at Watson University. She is the Vice President of Strategic HR at Gold Star Jewelry Private Limited. One of the personalities who I've met in my life whose journey is inspiring to say the least, and uh, someone who comes with a different aura, which is a mix of leadership roles in the luxury industry space. She has spent more than 20 years in just gems and jewelry, in the roles of HR, in sales as well. She has worked on market expansion, not just nationally, but internationally as well. And, uh, Dr. Soumya is one person who has been amongst the student community and she is working with some of the business schools in India where her contribution is immense. And without further ado, I would like to welcome Thank Dr. Soumya so much, at the episode. And uh, over to you, if you can just introduce yourself and tell us more about you. Oh. Uh you have given a, quite an elaborate uh, you know, introduction about me, but to say the least, I'm just a student of life, and I do believe in that uh, adage very firmly, and this is something that I have lived my life with. So I guess that's, uh, that's about it. I'm a knowledge sponge. So even today, while I was with uh, you know, young leaders, would-be young leaders, uh, that is what my uh, takeaway today was. Okay. Nice. I mean, it's, it's, really, it's really an honor for us that you visited our campus. Um, students loved your session a lot. And this is one thing which I would like to tell the world that today's Dr. Soumya uh, really inspired many students and it was a session which received an overwhelming response. Thank you. So my first question to you would be, your journey was not easy, of course. I mean, we, 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 we see that from where you started with you know, working at a startup company back in 1999, right? And then to the position where you are, I'm sure there have been a lot of challenges, right? Uh, you had some personal, uh, I would say, uh, traumatic experience, which was part of your, I would say, growth phase as well. Uh, if you can tell us more about that on, on how you, you found your calling in life, and how you were stern and firm amidst all odds. So thank you for, uh, for asking that, Chahat. And uh, yes, I have worked through various spectrums uh, when I come to my professional life. So I started off with telecommunication, went into education. I did something in the retail space uh, when I was working with a Crossword Bookstore. Uh, then again, I came back into the IT sector when e-commerce was just a budding you know, concept at that point of time, and then back to luxury. Uh, all these industries have always contributed to what agility is all about, adaptability is all about, resilience is all about, because once you are in these different industry, you have to be a quick learner to actually be able to perform. The same thing translated into my real life experience. Uh, when tragedy struck our family, the only option left with me was to stand up, look at it in its face and say, hey, bring it on. And when you have that kind of a mindset, that's what I call a winning mindset, which is not turning your gaze away from the problems, but with the problems, you're also finding your strength. And in that strength lies your solution. Because once you face it, once you learn to face your pain, you will always gain. Because then you cease to succumb and you become a winner. So this is what I would like to say. Well, it's really inspiring because the way you have turned out to be strong in this journey, which was full of thorns, right? I think it's commendable because a lot of young leaders today watching this show should know that your journey was not a cakewalk, yeah. right? Soumya, my next question to you is, uh, we've heard a lot about your HR industry space. I mean, you have 
contributed a lot to this to the space. And uh, there was a session which you spoke about on retaining right and recruiting right. Correct. Right. If you can tell us more about that and how as companies should look at this particular practice and how should they adopt it? Uh, again, another very relevant question. So what happens today is that we have this very beautiful portfolio in HR, which is known as HRBP, okay, HR business process. But a true HR is only that HR, whether you are in even something as small and as trivial as maybe a coffee shop. But do you know what goes in in making even a nookar coffee shop? And if you know that this is the kind of coffee that people would like, then you will definitely love to have and recruit that flavor of skill set that is going to brew that coffee. Now, if you know your business, if you're passionate about your business, that is where you will always bring in people who will not only couple just for the sake of the monetary benefits, but the coupling with the passion of the business is more important. So when I go to business schools, this is what I'm looking out for. Whether the person would actually love to couple with the cause, whether they are really passionate about fashion, for luxury, for retail, are they passionate about jewelry? So I, we, you know, in our organization, we say that we don't sell jewelry. We are in the business of emotions because jewelry is what carries the emotions forward. So this is where the whole uh, you know, change in the mindset happens. So uh, people go, people just say, oh, you know, I just love this person's attitude. I just love the CV. I love the credentials. So this person is the topper. But is that the right fit for the organization? Probably not. Probably that silent, understated underdog is going to become your star if you know the BCG matrix that yeah. I'm talking about. So, you know, it, things change and you have to know the business. For HR, you have to know the business to recruit the right set of skill sets who will become the future contributors. So that would be my take. Awesome, I mean, my, my takeaway from this statement would be that uh, you are in the business of not making jewelry, you're in the business of emotions, Correct. right? and your jewelries carries emotions. They're just the vehicle of emotions. Absolutely, so that is something which is interesting and uh, another way of looking at this luxury space of, uh, of, of you know, various uh, jewelry, diamonds that you're working on. Uh, my next question to you, Dr. Soumya, would be, I'm sure when you were growing up back in late 90s and uh, early 2000s, you must have looked up to a leader Right, and who has been that leader who you've always looked up to, and why? Okay, so interestingly enough, uh, when I was a kid at school, so we used to get these diaries, okay? Um, so we used to call them our calendar diaries. In school, we used to get them. So when I was in eighth, I used to scribble. I, I want to be like Nena Lal Kidwai and Sulajja Motwani. Uh, in a small town like Jabalpur, people were like, you know, people write Indira Gandhi or Mother Teresa, and who are these women? So uh, we used to get this business standard magazine in the house and business world, and that's where I started knowing these names. Uh, these women were very, very different, very different. And um, these, these women stood out for what they believed in, in a man's world, if I can say so, you know. Uh, these corporate women uh, were also exemplary examples of balancing their work life. So today, if you talk about Kiran Bedi or Indra Nui, you know that they have kids back home. They have managed that life, as well as the portfolio that the organization or the country has entrusted them with. And that is something that I always aspired to be. So probably relating back to your first question, where do you get your strength from? I think these women, they have, they, they may probably not even know the kind of lives that they have touched and one of the, those lives is me. So I guess that is what has inspired me. That is what has, uh, you know, always propelled me to, to be where I am today. Even though I've not probably still touched the zenith, but yes, I know I'm climbing ahead. I mean, I would like to just uh, 
tell you about something that you know people sometimes feel that life is all about taking yeah. it's not about taking but it's about how much you give back right and i think you have touched many lives through the last two decades uh through meeting a lot of students your uh new employees who join your organization and of course people internationally as well uh my next question is something very interesting dr somya because as an hr recruiter you have been asking this question quite a many times in your interviews that where do you see yourself 10 years down the line <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people you know say where do you see 10 years down the line people say oh like the ceo of this and say i would like to say just a contented ceo of my life and that's what i would be when i say it's ceo of my life is that it is designed in the way that i wanted to live uh when i close my eyes absolutely no regrets uh, in fact chahat even today uh god forbid something happens uh, i can absolutely close my eyes and still be very contented with what i have made my life to be what my kids are i have a son and a daughter the way they they are and it's it's just a, it's one of the most contented life that i am living it's a wholesome life i couldn't have asked for better life than this yeah absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. i mean i totally agree, agree because, because uh you know as much as, as you are involved in your business, business similarly you give equal, equal amount of time at your home as well true. and that's, that's important true. when you maintain that work life balance yeah right my my, my last, last question to you dr somya would be so see, see as as, as your, your message, message to the, the world yeah i'm, I'm sure, sure whenever you go, go to any business school or any company that you visit you, you have a message, message to give, give. But, but from this show i would like to ask you what would be your message for the world who sees this video uh, uh, listens to you and uh, knows, knows about dr, dr. somya but then from her career from her personality <laughs> well um I find myself uh, still like I said a student for life but what I would like to uh, speak very openly about is that this is no longer a world of competition this is a world of collaboration so students must know where to build in their tribe I think that's what I spoke even during my talks so you have to have that fence that wall around you who is going to always stand with you by you and you know um hold you when the trip happens second very important thing for every storm there was a noah who carefully built his ark remember to build that ark you have to know where you want to go so today it is not just about earnings like you rightly said it's also about giving so i do crochet work which i sell off and the proceeds go to anyone who is in need for money i do baking the proceeds again again you know is used for charity work so i have my scrubs business the proceeds from there also go to the charity work so you need to create a more wholesome life don't create a life that is made out of someone else's aspiration it has to be your calling it has to be your way it has to just be you because like it is said it is one life be the champion of that amazing i mean i'm just trying to digest what you said but <laughs> though though it sounds to be simple but this is i would say very very deep because one thing which you spoke about is it's not about competitions you need to collaborate and work second of course you mentioned that it's all about being you being yourself being uh, an original and not looking at what others are doing right you need to be just be not a copy to somebody do what you can do the best of what you can ultimately you have just one life enjoy make the most out of it so thank you so much dr somya it was really a pleasure having you with us at voxen campus and uh, if you have any final uh, message maybe if you want to just sum up everything in one line so i would just say that um, voxen was a amazing experience for me and i'm sure that the students that are going to pass out from here they're going to be uh, strong leaders on their own because not only what voxen instills in themselves they're going to be ambassadors for rest of their lives or whatever 
you know, they will be known as Voxenites. So I think that is what I would like to say. And thank you very much for having me over. Thank you so much, Dr. Soumya. So with this, we've come to the end of this episode with Dr. Soumya Badgayan, who was visiting Voxen University as part of the business talk and the Voxen Leaders Studio episode as well. Uh, we'll come back with the next episode very soon, the next month. And with this, have a great day, have a great week, and wish you the very best. Thank you.